Lead me to some soul today. Oh, teach me, Lord, just one Welcome, everyone, day. to lesson number 57 of a podcast that we call Leading Others to Christ. Now, if you're watching the video portion of this, or honestly, even if you're listening to this, you realize that I'm not Dan Barker. <laughs> And we've actually kind of flipped the, the script a little bit today. Uh, my name is Matt Maudlin, and uh, I'm a deacon at Traders Point Church of Christ in Indianapolis and have been for about 14 years. And I've kind of been the, the back office guy for the podcast that we do here called Leading Others to Christ. And Dan and I have been working together on this for well over a year, and we got into some conversations and thought, you know what? Maybe the best thing to do, just with all that Dan's got going on and the many activities that he does and leading others to Christ, maybe we just need to pause a second and interview the interviewer. Mm -hmm. So we decided that this was going to be that, that episode. And so I'm excited today to open this up and uh, interview uh, Dan Barker, which a lot of you, obviously, if you've been listening, know who Dan is. Uh, Dan is a... Um, He's uh, the evangelist, and he's also one of the shepherds at um, Creekside Church of Christ, uh, just south of Indianapolis in Franklin, Indiana. And so we're going to take an opportunity to kind of just learn more about Dan and what he's been involved in and some of the things that he's got going. So welcome, Dan. It's great to have you. Well, thanks, Matt. What a, what a turn of events here, right? A little, little switcheroo. A little switcheroo. It's good. Absolutely. So, so. If you've been listening to this, you know um, a little bit of Dan's story. Obviously, he often opens up and lets people know that um, he is someone who obeyed the gospel when he was 21 years old in Owensboro, Kentucky. But I just thought maybe it would be good to just take a quick moment and kind of explain that a little bit more, because um, I know you always focus on the person that you're interviewing and their story. But maybe you can take a second and just kind of share with everybody a little bit uh, beyond that. How did you uh, come to know the truth? How did you obey the gospel when you were 21? Well, all right. Um, lots, of, uh, lots of pieces to the puzzle there, if you will. But um, actually, there was, uh, interestingly enough, where I grew up in Owensboro, it was on 1850 Calhoun. I can still remember 1850 Calhoun Street in Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, Within uh, three blocks, there was a, uh, a Church of Christ and uh, never was inside the building, you know, growing up. And far as I know, nobody from there ever came to visit. We were only three blocks away. As far as I know, now maybe somebody talked to mom or dad or something, but uh, I never uh, heard of anybody from there coming to uh, talk to us. We had a neighbor that was two doors down and they went there and uh, I ended up playing high school basketball with uh, one of the boys there so I, I knew that family so I, I had heard the the name Church of Christ but didn't really know anything at all about them and uh, and then when I was 17 years old Gay will probably kill me for telling us no but uh, 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 in high school uh, I saw this cute little sophomore and I wanted to ask her out and uh, and her name was Gay Nell Cox and uh, so I asked her to go to the Davis County Fair and I asked her to go on a Wednesday night. And uh, so her mom said she could go. But, you know, we have Bible. she said to, to Gay, well, we have Bible study on Wednesday night. Why don't you ask? And I was Danny growing up. Why don't you ask Danny and see if he'll go to Bible study with you? Then you can go to the fair afterwards. So she said, uh, you know, she asked me and I went, why, sure, you know, and uh so that was the first time that I was ever uh, in the building, if you will, uh, uh, of the Lord's people. And I was really surprised looking around the room of the number of people that I knew. Owensboro wasn't that big of a town. But uh, uh, one of my high school coaches was there. One of uh, uh, an insurance adjuster was there that I knew. Uh, uh, the chiropractor uh, that our family went to, he and his wife were there. And that really uh, kind of uh, surprised me. But uh, so it was, I guess, a series of events over the years that, uh, uh, and I joke and say, and maybe it's true, but I'm a little slow, but I really fought it. I just said, you know, this, these things can't be right. And um, 
I remember asking uh, Gay well, what my takeaway. This shows you how immature I was. My takeaway was, uh, well, why? Wow, what's wrong? Y'all don't have enough money to buy a piano, and uh, so that's 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 see, and that's what a lot of people see and hear the first time they come. We've talked about the eyes of the visitor, um, but uh, so it was a series of things over the years of uh, of me wanting to learn and people giving me books. My uh, Gay's mother. I would give me books all the time on debates that they used to do uh, back in the fifties and stuff. And I would read those and get all excited and fired up and mad actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but then, uh, then uh, there in Owensboro, uh, finally, uh, 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 through, through various studies, I uh, came to understand the truth and obey the gospel. As you said, when I was 21. Okay. Well, so we can thank Gay for all of this, right? Thank Gay, that's right. Thank <laughs> well, I know, just because I know you, we met years ago working on another project together, and I just know that you have such a heart for evangelism. And I know one of the questions that you like to ask other people is, why are you so on fire for this? And I think that's a fair question to ask you. Um, obviously, you knew what it was like to be lost. I, I'm the same way. I I was baptized when I was 23. But my question to you would be is, um, why are you so fired up um, to help lead others to Christ? Well, I think there's there's multiple things. But one is I, because of what I went through and, and, and realizing where I was, uh, that I was lost and I wanted to go to heaven. And I wanted my family to go to heaven. Uh, and I wanted friends that I knew to go to heaven. And, and uh, so it was, you know, we talk about it all the time. I, I learned what the good news was and I really wanted to share it. And I started sharing it with some colleagues, uh, friends of mine and uh, different ones. And, uh, and so I, I, it's just been a part of me ever since I've learned the truth of, of trying to teach others uh, and, and motivate it. And then studying the scriptures, you know, when I, I you know, like Paul said it, in Second Corinthians, knowing the terror of the Lord, I persuade men. Uh, and then Ezekiel, where God goes to Ezekiel and tells him, you know, to be a watchman over Israel and, and ends up telling him that if he didn't do his job, and, and I'm paraphrasing now, that uh, blood would be on his hands if he didn't go tell the wicked what they were doing were wrong. And uh, if he told, if he didn't tell them, he was going, they would be lost, but he would be lost, too. And if he told them and they didn't respond, they would be lost, but he, he would be fine. Uh, it wouldn't jeopardize his soul. And then I, I bring this up every, every time we talk, but Paul talking to Timothy, telling Timothy to take the things that he had learned and show them to uh, faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. So I just, I think I learned early on that this was, uh, this, this whole idea was, each one, I use this phrase, each one is to get one. We're, we're to take the things and share it. And uh, and we've had several that have obeyed the gospel here lately. And it's just, you know, the excitement that's there. And people, a lot of people haven't experienced it. Uh, to be able to teach someone and see them come to the knowledge of the truth. And, uh, and we give God the credit for it, obviously. But just the excitement's there. And uh, we've got a 72 year old that just obeyed the gospel last Wednesday. Uh, he was a Vietnam vet and this blessed his heart. He lost his wife in June. So he's still very emotional about that. But this guy is just over the top excited. Uh, he's already been on the phone. His, his sister lives out in Montana and he's been on the phone trying to teach her. He, there's another vet that he knows and he's, he's supposed to be, bring, he's going to pick him up and bring him to services Sunday. He's, he's only a week old <laughs> in, in the Lord. And, uh, but he's just so excited. So it, once you see that excitement, it's, uh, you just can't keep it. I can't keep it inside. I've, I've got to get it out. Yeah. Well, no, that's definitely, I, I see that in you uh, so, so much for sure. Um, one of the things that we've, learned on this journey through this podcast is that so many of us are not doing what I think the Bible commands us to do relative to leading others to Christ. And, um, and I know you, you, you're doing studies almost, almost daily with, with people, with non-Christians. Um, you're very active in that. And, and I know through that, 
uh, it has bear, uh, it's, it's bared fruit, um, lots of studies, but also lots of baptisms. And just knowing you, you have um, a certain approach that you have developed that you take in, in studying. And, um, and, and fortunately, I've had the opportunity to kind of go, go through that uh, with yeah. you. I've had the opportunity to, to be a part of that with studies with others and things like that. But I don't know that people who are listening or have been listening to the podcast, maybe they're not aware of um, some of the things that you're doing uh, to lead others to Christ. And so we thought maybe it would be good for you to take a moment, and just kind of share a little bit about, about your study. Um, and again, as we've said many times, there's, there's many different different studies out there and so many different things. Uh, you have just kind of developed a technique or a, a, a study specifically on your own. Maybe go back and, and share with people how the study came about that you're doing. And then if you would, why don't you break down a little bit and just kind of share the format of this study so that people can, can understand a little bit about your technique of doing that. Sure. Well, thanks for asking about that. Well, the story goes back a few years ago. We had uh, <clears throat> moved from Owensboro to Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, we were worshiping with the uh, University Heights congregation there, and uh, uh, they had appointed me one of the deacons, and uh, Mark Nations was the preacher, and uh, through some connections and things, uh, we were asked to go to Jamaica to work with the church there, and uh, so Mark and I were, you know, we got together. Well, how, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? And uh, and so we started putting a, a, a plan together with a study. And uh, so I want to give Mark uh, credit that he's due there. But uh, and then so we took that study and went down there on two different occasions. And I've tweaked it over the years. Uh, but the the whole idea is, uh, and, and like you said, there's different uh you know, Charles Goodall, a dear friend of mine, he's got it in the same hour of the night. Uh, and there's, you know, I remember the Jules Miller film strips when they came out years ago. I remember when that came out, I was so excited and got a projector. In the, and, uh, but, uh, and I've looked at all the different studies that are out there, and I'm sure there's some that I haven't seen. But I wanted to come up with something that would uh, be uh, simple to teach, simple for the student to understand. And uh, again, think about going to someplace like Jamaica or Africa or any, any Franklin, Indiana, and sit down with somebody that doesn't know that much about the Bible. It, it has to be a simple approach, but, but there has to be enough meat in it so that in, where you can help them understand what this is all about. And uh, so that's what we've done over the years. And, uh, uh, you know, we've, we've done it a lot of times. I continue to look at it and say, what can I do to make this better? And, and uh uh, but again, we give God the glory for all the, the good things that have happened. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I've had an opportunity to, to go through this a few times. Um, the study that you've created, I've actually written it out completely in my Bible as well. Um, it, I, know. It, I just really right. have connected with it, uh, extremely well, so much so that, um, an effort that we're doing at our congregation to try to stir people up and get them more excited about leading others to Christ um, has led to an opportunity for, for you to come in and share your study with, I don't know, probably between 30, 35, 40 people who I worship with. Um, maybe you could share a little bit about how, what's going on with that and uh, kind of where we're at with that and kind of what, what our, what our hope is through all of this. Well, uh, yes, and that was uh, just last Saturday, and that was so exciting uh, to meet uh, so many of those people I'd never met before, uh, different ages, different backgrounds, uh, uh, coming together, and uh, that, that's what's exciting. It's like, you know, you can study with somebody uh, and, and show them uh, the scriptures, uh, but then, you know, that's one thing. But then teach, if somebody says, raise their hand, and they say, I want to learn how to do this, to teach the teachers. And that's what we were doing. These were all Christians and they wanted to learn how to teach. Uh, and I've got a teaching background, so it's kind of natural for me, I guess. But uh, and there's uh, there's a lot of uh, techniques, if you will, and, and ways to uh, to understand the student that you're talking to and uh, help them connect the dots. And so it's always exciting to me when somebody says, can you show me how to do this? 
Uh, and uh, because what we want to do is like Paul with Timothy to get people uh, that were there equipped to be able to go out and teach others as well. And uh, because you can only do so much as a person. Uh, Gay and I have been on so many studies together. I really believe in the concept of two by two. Jesus sent out the 70 two by two. He sent out the apostles two by two. And if, if Matt's with Matt, if you're with me, when we go, you've heard me talk about this so much, but it gives me confidence because you've got my back. You're right there with me. If I stumble somewhere, uh, you, you can help me. And, uh, uh, and, and I just think that's so important uh, in the whole process uh, because it is work. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, this is one of the reasons I think people don't do it. You know, we have songs in our song, but it don't t- talks about it being work, mm-hmm. <laughs> work for the Lord. Well, some people, and I'm, just, I'm being critical, but some people, they're so wrapped up in their lives, they don't have any time for the Lord. They don't have any time to do any work. And uh, that's sad because priorities are not in the right place. But uh, that's one of the things you have to learn. Uh, it's like teaching at, at any level. And it, it's hard to take somebody and teach them how to be a welder or a mechanic or teach them uh, technical things. Uh, you have to have a lot of patience uh, and, and help the student get there. And the same thing is true in, uh, in leading others to Christ. Yeah, no, I, I so much see that because some of the things that we've learned through this activity of doing this podcast as much as we've done and the people that we've talked to through this, one of the things I think that you would probably agree that we have seen is that there are so many Christians that would probably stop and say, you know what, I, I don't even know where I would start in a study with somebody. You know, they, they themselves are Bible students, but they've never really sat down and thought about where would I start? One of the things that I love about what you do with your study is that um, you're just using the Bible, which I think is a critically important piece of that for those to see that everything that you're doing is coming from the Bible, right? It's not, it's not from Dan Barker. It's not from another man. It's, it's, it's from the scriptures. And, uh, and so that's critical. The other side of it is, I just think it's so helpful. The fact that as you put it, it's like an open book test, right? You go through a series of questions, you identify where the scriptures are, where those answers are found. And you take people through and you have them read it for themselves. You have them write it down, uh, the questions, write down the scriptures, write down the answers, and it just walks people through this. And I have, I've gotten feedback from this, even this one Saturday that we've had with these other Christians, people have said to me, you know what, I've never, I've been a Christian my whole life, and I've never had people put things together in a systematic way for me to digest this in this way, it just makes so much sense. It's just a great way to, to kind of spell it out. I, I think that's really helpful for people. Well, thank you for that. And again, that, that's a result of a lot of years. You can see I'm not getting any younger, but it's through a lot of years of uh, tweaking this. And But, you know, I, I want to go back to something that you said, because uh, uh, we work together on this. Uh, I really, it's powerful when you sit down with somebody at their kitchen table and, you know, and what I go in with is my Bible and a yellow pad. Uh, and, and I talk about that. We're going to get everything that we say and do is going to be based on what we find in this book. And I keep I say it's not Dan Barker. It's, you know, don't look at me. And several times during the study, I, when they answer a question, I say, well, now, why did you answer it that way? Because Dan Barker told you. And they say, no, because it says it right there in the Bible. Uh, but uh, just like the the exercise of writing uh, uh, the study in your Bible. Uh, it's like a chain link uh, reference. And so the people see you, you're, you're not, you don't have printed material and they don't know where you got the printed material if you have that with you. Like you said, that is that wh- where's the source of authority for that? Is that coming from some other man or whatever? But if you're just using the Bible, it, it, it's so powerful. Um, and uh, I found that to be very effective. One of the things that I'd like to mention that <clears throat> that I started doing years ago, and it's worked well for me, uh, is how I set up the study. Mm-hmm. And uh, so let's say that I've met you, Matt, and maybe you've, you've uh, maybe you've been a visitor at church, and uh, we've greeted and talked to you a little bit, and uh, or maybe you're somebody that I work with or go to school with, or whatever it might be. 
But if we'll listen to people, they give us all kinds of signals. Uh, obviously, if you come visiting a church and I find out that you're not a Christian, you're interested in spiritual things uh, or you wouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and or maybe I hear you at work, you, you attend some denomination and I hear you talking about some uh, vacation Bible school or some Christmas program or some, you know, one of the other things that groups do. And uh, and so that tells me that Matt's interest is in, in spiritual things or he wouldn't be involved in those things where he is. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll look for a time to get Matt aside and I'll say, Matt, hey, if you got a second, sure. You know, I'll, we have a role play here, Matt. But uh, <laughs> Matt, if you got a second? Sure. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, listen, I know uh, I know you're interested in spiritual things, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I am. I, I know you are because I've heard you I've heard you talk about God, I've heard you talk about Jesus and well, uh, hopefully you know that I am too. And uh, I wanted to share this with you. I have a study and maybe it, it depends on where you are in this whole process, but uh, I have a study that I saw the other day uh, that I recently saw that I think you would really enjoy. And uh, I would like to share it with you. So, Matt, would you do me a favor? Would you do me a favor? Sure. You know, it's OK. You know, people can respond different ways. But uh, and I said, well, if, would you I'd like to come over to your place maybe next Thursday at seven o'clock and, and uh, I'll just be there for an hour. But I want to share this with you and see if you see what I see. And uh, because I think you'd really be excited about it. And like you said, I say it's like a, if you ever had one in school, like an open book test where there's a series of questions that are asked. And then the verses, the verse or verses in the Bible where the answer is found, uh, that's given. And we turn there and uh, answer the questions based on what those verses say. And after you see a few of them, you'll understand how it works. But uh, would that be OK? It was seven o'clock next uh, Thursday. Would that be OK? Seven o'clock. Sounds All right. Good. Well, good. Well, I'll be there. And uh, just have your, you have a Bible. I know you do. Have your Bible and a yellow pad. And, and uh, anyway, it's just uh, something like that that I've done over the years has been comfortable for me and <clears throat> different approaches with different people. But uh, the other thing I want to touch on too is that over the years, we've gone to several congregations and we've called them weekend workshops or we've called them, uh, you know, different things. But where we go in and show, uh, the congregation, uh, what this study uh, is all about, and just talk to them about the seriousness of the responsibility that we have as individuals. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't understand that. They think it's the elder's job or the preacher's job. And uh, but each one of us have given the res- have been given the responsibility to tell others about Jesus and uh, and equip try to help equip them so that they can be involved in in leading others to Christ in their community. Yeah, well, why don't you expand on that a little bit? So this idea that you have actually gone into some other congregations, invited into other congregations to to share some of this, that's one of the things that probably has been one of the biggest ahas for me throughout this entire process is the is the awareness and understanding. Again, I, I go to a congregation that's probably on the larger side. We probably have 350 or so members. I know there's some that are bigger. But the majority of the churches of Christ are, are much smaller uh, in size. And, and, and I didn't realize until we started going through this podcast that um, we are, um, the, the church is dying. And, um, and the need for what you're talking about and the need to go into congregations and, and, and talk about this and, and do this. So maybe share a little bit about what that process looks like. Um, as you've done this in the past, and you've been invited into congregations to help stir them up and get them understanding of their responsibility and, and ways that they can reach out to others in the community, maybe share a little bit about what does a weekend look like when you've done that in the past? All right, we've done them a couple of different ways, but uh, <clears throat> typically what we've done is uh, and like you say, it, everybody's familiar with uh, gospel meetings. And I mean, even think about that, you know, back in the day in the 40s, 50s and, uh, and early 60s, you know, you, you have a gospel meeting and they might last uh, a week. They might last two weeks. Uh, and there would be a lot of people in the community that would come in and you go back during that time. And, and uh, a lot of people didn't have TVs. They didn't I mean, you know, 
And uh, if, if something was going on in town, some of them would be tent meetings. And, but it would be like uh, everybody in town would come out because they want to see what was going on. And, uh, and that was a powerful way at that, at that, uh, in that day and time to reach the lost. But uh, gospel meetings have really lost their uh, enthusiasm and zeal and purpose, I think, over the years. And it's really more now just for uh, uh, exhortation, uh, edifying, if you will, the, 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 the members and trying to invite people to come. And, uh, and, and sometimes we're not very, uh, very good or very aggressive at doing that. But uh, so there has to be a different way to look at this. So but we would go into a congregation on a Friday night and uh, and have a lesson uh, talking about what we're going to do. Uh, but the main focus was on Saturday uh, to have Saturday where we would have those that are willing or able to be there. And we really sit down and go to work and uh, like a classroom. And we sit down with the Bible and the yellow pad and I take them through the study and show them the study and teach them how to teach the study. And we're able to three lessons and uh, we take them through that through the course of the day on Saturday. Then on Sunday, uh, the Bible class time, we would do follow up there. And then with the two sermons, uh, Sunday morning and Sunday night, there would be more follow up of uh, things that uh, recommendations of what they can do, you know, after I'm gone, what they can do with what they've learned for the weekend to be able to implement some of these things in their community. Yeah. So, so you've done some of these, what, what has been some of the experience? Um, Like what has been the outcome that some of the congregations have done with this? Well, one in particular that comes to mind and uh, we interviewed uh, Rob Dispinett at the Knightsville congregation. uh, Episode number uh, two, I think it was. Episode number two, exactly right. And, uh, they got so excited uh, and uh, they had four elders. They divided the congregation up into four groups. They called them the go groups and they started going out in the community and uh, different groups uh, and, and going out and trying to set up studies. And, and they've just gotten really, really excited about it. Uh, one of the things that has worked well in some congregations is uh, what we would call invite Sunday where we would take one Sunday night a month and, uh, and have a lesson uh, pre, pre-designed, you know, like a, a thing for the whole year. Mm. Uh, one year we had, we called come and see uh, and uh, where we would, uh, uh, where I would have the lesson that would be prepared or the preacher would have a lesson to be prepared for the, uh, the non-Christians that would be attending. And it was first, a first principles lesson. And uh, but anyway, the ones in the congregation, they would know what the topic was going to be and they would know how to invite their friends and family to come. And uh, that has worked real well because it's 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 focused. And again, it's just uh, it's like a lot of that, you know, how we are in life. If if we don't have a a vision or a focus, uh, we talk, we sing about things, we preach about things and uh, talk about them in class. And it's just like it doesn't go anywhere. And uh so it's kind of like a call to action to uh, to get people uh, focused on that one Sunday night a month where they would be inviting family and friends uh, to come. And then and then uh, then the goal of the congregation is to follow up with those folks and uh, and try to set up studies with them. And that's worked real well. And I know uh, Rob, Dispen, they're doing that with their group. And I know that you guys are getting ready to start something like that as well. Uh, and again, it, it, it's such a, I think it's such a simple thing, but the whole congregation can rally around that. And we all know what we're going to do the third Sunday night or whatever it is. Uh, and everybody is really, uh, really going to work on trying to invite people in the community to come. Yeah, no, that's um, so powerful. I've got somebody whispering in my ear that we've got five minutes left. Can oh, you wow. That? Wonder who that is. I don't know who would do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, since it's my job, I guess. Uh, I know. Um, so the, I guess kind of the thing that I think is fitting to talk a little bit about is, you know, we've been doing this for a little over a year. And I think from where we started to where we are today, not only did what, and I'll just speak for myself, not only is my awareness and understanding of what needs to go on and maybe what's not happening in local congregations like it should, and the struggle that individuals have with this, um, 
I, I have learned so much and realized the challenges that are there. And we have had a lot of conversations and certainly from the episodes of the podcast and just the analytics of how many people are listening to these and, and then just the feedback that we get from people about how helpful and powerful these have been. We realized that although this kind of just started as a COVID project for us, for us to learn more about this, this has been very impactful. And I think that there's some tremendous opportunities that we've realized that can, can come from a continuation of this. And so wanted to maybe we take the remaining amount of our time and just maybe if you could just share a little bit about what, what's kind of next steps. What are we thinking here? What are some of the things that we've discussed that um, that we've taken action on already, the things that we'd like to plan to go forward um, to, to continue this process of helping people lead others to Christ? Well, uh, we're really excited about this because, you know, when you, when you look and, and look at the big picture and say, <clears throat> all right, we're just one or two people here, and, you know, what can we do? And, um, you know, and talking about uh, how, to, how to reach out and teach others how to lead others to Christ, you know, we thought came up with the idea of forming a nonprofit, and we've done that, and it's called LeadingOthersToChrist.org, and where we would uh, find individuals uh, that are passionate about this as well, uh, that have got family and friends uh, that are not Christians, uh, and they, they realize uh, their responsibility. They want to learn how. They want to try to get the word out, and so with a group of individuals supporting this, that would enable us to do a lot of things. Uh, one of which is, and we've come up with this number, uh, and you correct me if I, if I get the number wrong, Matt, but we've learned that about 54% of all of the uh, conservative churches of Christ, uh, the average number of people in the pew on Sunday is 34. Mm -hmm. And that would be counting, you know how we do, we count everybody. <clears throat> we count the adults and the babies and everything. Um, so you've got 54% of the congregations uh, have 34 people. So many of them are, are not even able to uh, financially to be able to, to have a, a full-time preacher or the preacher would have to get outside support. And uh, so there's just a, a lot of things that are, that are uh, uh, lacking there in, that, in those small congregations. Well, if where we could uh, have the support where we could go to a congregation like that, and go in there where there's no expense to them and go in with the, uh, the time and the energy and to show them how uh, to do these things, uh, have uh, written and printed material that can be taken into them as well. Uh, and, uh, and I'm really excited about that because I think there's a lot of congregations that would just say, you know, we would welcome that, uh, welcome that help. And so, uh, Matt, as you know, that's what we're working on right now. And then the other thing that we're <clears throat> that's going to be coming down the road, I guess I'm going to go ahead and mention it, is that uh, uh, the uh, the idea of a uh, of an app has come up that could be used on the phone, could be used on the computer, of where the study could be put on that, and somebody could actually show that to someone on their phone, or better yet, they could just do that little uh, exercise I did a few minutes ago about inviting somebody and but just you could do it and say look I, I i recently saw this study i think you would really enjoy and it's actually on an app and would you give me permission to send it to you and then after you look at the first episode give me a call and let's talk about it so there's a i think there's a lot of people in this digital time that would say well you know if matt thinks i ought to look at that if he thinks that's good i'll, I'll go in and see what what's going on with that and uh, and so we're really excited about that. Another thing, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice, <clears throat> I'm getting a horse there, getting too excited, um, is the uh, a lot of our listeners are familiar with Appian Media. And uh, the Appian Media folks uh, have even agreed, uh, they're excited about it too, and they've even agreed to, uh, uh, to film and record us doing this study. And uh, so that's going to be uh, where that, that video would be used in that app. So, uh, and Matt, you know more about that than I do. So, but that's an exciting thing. Yes. And their help in shooting the video of you doing this study is going to be so powerful because as we've said, 
um, there's a lot of people who um, know uh, individuals, everybody knows someone who um, needs to be led to Christ, but maybe they're just not comfortable leading that study. Um, this is going to give them a great opportunity, a great tool to share with them and, uh, and be able to give them something that, that that individual can go through themselves, that there will be um, help along the way to answer questions and be involved in that. Um, so much of why I think uh, I was hoping that people from our congregation could listen to you do this study, knowing not everybody they themselves is going to do it. But if they've gone through it, they're more inclined to invite someone else to watch it or to see it or to hear it. Um, I think that's absolutely so powerful. So this idea that um, started as a COVID project really has kind did. of really blossomed into something big here. And I think where we're at with this right now is this understanding that there's so many congregations that are too small to support the idea of somebody coming in and really helping them get organized and help them to create, I guess what I would call an evangelism plan for their local congregation. But that's really what we're talking about here is how can we help them create an evangelism plan for their congregation? We realize that so many of the congregations who really need it probably could not afford to support somebody to come in and do that. And that's why that nonprofit was created, knowing that there's so many generous Christians who understand the importance of this and understand what's happening in the church and that understand that churches are closing their doors regularly because of a lack of membership. And what we need to do is we need to get back to that commandment of leading others to Christ. And we need to, we need the skills to be able to do that. And so uh, I'm just going to throw this out there because there may be somebody who is listening to this who just wants to understand this more, or maybe they have some specific questions for you, Dan, or um, they want to understand how they could help. I know we've said this many times. We have created a website where all these podcasts are loaded on. You may be listening through um, another channel, like through Apple um, Podcasts or Spotify or different things like that, but uh, or watching you know, getting to it through Facebook, but we actually have a website leading others to Christ.org. And on that is a form that you can use to contact Dan directly. And you get all those contacts, right, Dan? Uh, yes. Anybody who writes you or anything like that. So I, I, my suggestion is if you're listening to this and you have questions or you have input or you have ideas or you would like to help, that would be a great place to go. Leading others to Christ.org. And there um, is a contact us form on there. And we'd love to hear from you um, and, and just, you know, help us understand uh, what you think about this and where this is going. But there's so much more to, to talk about with all of this, but we thought this would be a great place to, to start switching seats and <laughs> letting me interview you. <clears throat> As I said, uh, you've been such a mentor to me and through this process. And I, I appreciate everything that you do. Um, and, uh, I'm so excited to be on this journey with you and I'm glad for this venue to be able to share a lot of this too, but, um, thank you for allowing us to switch seats <laughs> and letting me interview you for once. Well, and thank you because I want to thank you. And it's great that we are past cross because I couldn't have done this, uh, uh, without your help at all. So, uh, <clears throat> that's the other thing too, that we're, that the challenge that we have, uh, and doing the Lord's work today is uh, of the, uh, especially with all the COVID and all the stuff that we've gone through with all this and having to do our, our live stream and our sermons and, and Zoom and everything. So there's a lot of energy going on right now out there with different uh, preachers and elders of how, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? And, uh, and some things are working and some things are work in progress or whatever, but, um, uh, but, uh, now I, I just think, uh, you know, back to something that just popped into my mind again about the smaller congregations uh, and even some that are not so small. You know, some congregations uh, are not doing meetings at all anymore. It's, I mean, just gospel meetings. I know uh, David Belts here in Indiana does a list for the churches in Indiana where the gospel meetings are. 
And if you look at that list at the bottom of it, he has a list of congregations there where there's nothing. And there's just a lot. They can't even, they can't, for whatever reason, they're not even doing gospel meetings anymore. And so because of that, that was the main focus in the past of how we reach people in the community. Now that's off the table. So uh, we just think this could be something that could fill a void there that uh, has just occurred through all kinds of consequences. And we just got to get on fire again for the Lord. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I can tell you, uh, I know I speak for Dan. We've gotten so much encouragement from others relative to this effort. And uh, we're so appreciative of that and, and continue to ask for that encouragement, but also ask for prayers as we endeavor to do uh, the Lord's work through this. So, um, you know, thank you again, Dan. Thank you, everybody who listened. Um, uh, excited for the opportunity to kind of share a little of this, and we've got so much more to share. So um, thank you so much for everybody listening. And Dan, thank you again. Well, thank you. And I, I kind of like this role reversal here. We might do this. We might do this again soon. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, brother. Yeah, thank you. Melt my heart and fill my life. Give me one soul today.